What is going on everybody? What is going on the catch fam? My name is John Dawson and in today's video we are hopping into our starts and sits for week three of the 2022 fantasy football season at the quarterback position. If you guys do enjoy today's content, be sure to hit that like button on the way and hit that subscribe button. Of course, if you are new to the channel, we put out free daily fantasy football content and feel free to drop any comments, questions, concerns pertaining to the 2022 fantasy football season down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Without further ado, let's hop into today's video. All right, it's important to note that I am releasing this video after Thursday night football. I didn't think it would be too much of a big deal considering that most fantasy managers were not considering starting Jacoby Brissett or Mitchell Trubisky in Thursday night's action, but it's also worth noting that Jacoby Brissett had a decent game, 17.9 fantasy points, 21 pass completions off 31 attempts, 220 passing yards, and two scores, including no turnovers in week three. So a decent game, but nothing really crazy. Mitchell Trubisky, on the other hand, did not have himself too much of a good game. But other than Thursday night's matchup, we have got every matchup for today's video. All right, let's start with the Bills at the Dolphins. No doubt about it, you're starting Josh Allen in every format. If you own him, he is your starter. There's not a lot to say here. This is your quarterback number one in fantasy football at the moment. In week two versus Tennessee on Monday night football, he had 29.68 Fancy points, 38 passing tips, 26 completions, 317 passing yards, and four touchdowns. Maybe it's worth noting he didn't have as much of a day on the ground. One rushing attempt for 10 rushing yards, where in week one he had 10 rushing attempts, but it really does not matter whatsoever. Like I said, he is your quarterback one in fantasy, and he is a must start on a weekly basis. We all know that. Two a time, on the other hand, coming off a monster week two versus Baltimore 40.86 fantasy points 36 passing completions off 50 attempts 469 passing yards six touchdowns did not matter that he threw two interceptions all that being said I've still got Tua as a sit versus the Bills defense I get it guys I thought that Tua would be a sit last week as well going up against Baltimore's defense who ended up completely folding in the second half of things you get the Bills this week. I'm not in love with Tua. I've got an asterisk here because I do think for some of you guys who maybe lost Trey Lance or maybe Dak Prescott and Tua is the best option for you. I do think he's an okay streamer, but I just don't like this matchup versus the Bills for Tua even coming off of the monster performance. So ultimately, I've got Tua as a sit moving into week three, but we want to keep a close eye on things here. If Tua performs well against the Bills, we could really be looking at a 2022 fantasy football season where Tua is a viable starter. So keep a close eye on things, but overall, I've got Tua as a sit moving into week three. All right, Bengals at Jets. Man, oh man, Joe Burrow really starting to become worrisome for some fantasy managers out there. 20.2 fantasy points in week one, 15.5 in week two. Two, 36 passing attempts, 24 completions, 199 passing yards, and just one score, one fumble, 26 yards on the ground for Bur Burrow in week two. Excuse me, where in week one, even though he had the four interceptions, the two fumbles, including a lost fumble, he made up for things overall and at least got you 20 fantasy points. Week three, he gets the Jets. In my opinion, I think Burrow could have a big week, a bounce back week. I think the Bengals as a whole need a bounce back week. It's been an awful start to the season. I think Burrow could come out in high fashion and be the Joe Burrow that we saw for a majority of last year. So I like Burrow moving in to week three. Joe Flacco, on the other hand, I think is a solid stream. Week one, he had 59 passing tips. Week two, he had 40 for he's your QB 11 in fantasy nothing crazy but he did have 25.8 points in week two versus Cleveland uh four touchdowns as well as three over 300 passing yards so I could see Flacco and the Jets being in a situation in this game against the Bengals where they need to throw the football a lot and Joe Flacco puts up another solid fantasy stat line for those of you who lost Trey Lance or Dak Prescott if you don't have better options I think that Flacco is a decent streaming option until Zach Wilson is back in action. The Raiders at Titans. I've got Derek Carr as a star. He's not my favorite start. You know what you're getting with Carr. You're getting somewhere between 15 and 20 fantasy points. I don't see a lot of crazy games for Carr on the season. But the way that Tennessee's defense looks at the moment, 
this might be a pretty good game for Carr. So I actually like him going into this matchup. I think the Titans look absolutely awful. So overall, I think that Carr and the Raiders offense will have a good day. I think if he's your QB1, I think you're going to be okay this week. On the other hand, looking at Ryan Tannehill, a little bit worried about Tannehill. 2.8 points against Buffalo in week two. But it's Buffalo, you know, in week one, he did have 19.3 fantasy points. I still think he's a sit because I don't like this offense. and I don't trust them overall. The Raiders defense hasn't been great from a fantasy perspective in terms of facing uh, offenses like the Titans. But I really just don't have faith in Ryan Tannehill, who, like I said, has just been very sporadic. 19 points in week one, two points in week two. I don't like him just in general. So unless you're in a super flex league, I don't think there's any reason to consider Ryan Tannehill moving into week three. All right, Saints at Panthers. I got both quarterbacks in this matchup as a sit. Yeah, Jameis Winston had a good week one then a bad week two. So his name has kind of come off of the streaming option list. Do I think it's possible he has a much better week than he had in week two and week three? Yeah, it is. But am I confident in Jameis Winston right now? No, I'm absolutely not three interceptions and a fumble in week two after the 21 point performance in week one i just don't trust winston playing and simple i think better streaming options have emerged if you need one baker on the other hand had a decent week one at 15 points and then a more disappointing week two at 12 points both are ultimately disappointing so only 145 passing yards and one touchdown including one fumble and 35 rushing yards for Baker in week two versus the Giants. The Saints defense is much, much better than Cleveland who we faced in week one or the Giants who we faced in week two. So I'll leave Baker as a sit moving into week three. Ravens at Patriots. Man, oh man, what a season Lamar Jackson is getting started with. I mean, 21 points in week one versus the Jets and a whopping 41.6 points in week two versus Miami. 29 passing attempts, 21 completions, 318 passing yards, three passing touchdowns, 119 rushing yards, nine rushing attempts, and a score. Who cares about the one fumble all in week Two. We talked about Tua a little bit earlier out of that matchup. Of course, I like Lamar Jackson overall a lot more. Jackson is going to be a must start on a weekly basis. He gets the Patriots this week. I don't care who he's playing. If he's healthy, he's in your starting lineup. Mac and Cheese, on the other hand, has been a very, very sad start to the year. Quarterback number 26 through the first two weeks of the season. Eight and a half points in week one, 13.6 in week two. He had 252 passing yards, a score and an interception in week two. Just nothing here that makes me want to tell anyone to start Mac Jones from a fantasy perspective moving into week three. All right, Lions at Vikings. I think Jared Goff is a good enough streaming option here in week three, 15 and a half points in week one, 26 points against Washington in week two, 34 passing attempts, 20 completions, 256 passing yards, four passing touchdowns. Didn't have a great day rushing, did have negative one rushing yards. But the important thing here for those of you considering streaming Jerry Goff is he has had only one turnover this year. He did have one additional fumble that was not lost, but in week two, no turnovers and four touchdowns i like this game script i like the matchup versus the vikings i think that the lions are going to do anything they can to win their first divisional game of the season so i like your golf in this matchup quite a bit all right we've got captain you like that kirk cousins up next not a crazy ceiling for kirk cousins right you know what you're getting out of cousins somewhere Derek Carr, hopefully somewhere between 15 and 20 fantasy points on a weekly Basis, a disappointing week two versus Philadelphia, just 10.8 fantasy points, 27 completions off 46 attempts, one touchdown, three interceptions, and a fumble, including 221 passing yards. Just a bad week. Philadelphia really shined on Monday Night Football. I don't think Detroit's defense is as good as the Eagles' defense, but I still think they are pretty good. So I would tamper your ceiling expectations for Kirk. Cousins, but if you don't have a better option, I still think he's an okay start because, like I said, I like the game script. I like the matchup overall. I think it's going to be a good game between the Lions and Vikings. So, ultimately, I have Cousins as a start if you don't have better options moving into week three. All right, Eagles at Commanders. I like both quarterbacks in this 
matchup. Jalen Hurts is sitting as your quarterback three in fantasy at the moment. A monster night, Monday night football in week two. 33 points, 31 passing attempts, 26 completions, 333 passing yards, one touchdown, one score, 57 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns Jalen Hurts looks amazing that was after a 24 point performance against Detroit in week one Washington's defense has been shown to give up a lot of points so far this season I love everything here for Jalen Hurts moving into week three Carson Wentz on the other hand right your quarterback four right after Jalen Hurts at the moment in fantasy. 29 points in week one, 27.7 in week two, 46 passing tips, 30 completions, 337 passing yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. One fumble that was not lost in week two. He started off pretty slow. The Washington Commanders offense as a whole started off pretty slow in this matchup, but Carson Wentz was able to come back and put up a nice fantasy stat line. I do think he is start worthy at this point until we see another pattern emerge and at worst he's going to be a streaming option throughout the entire 2022 fantasy football season so i like wins i like this game script i like this matchup between the eagles and the commanders i think he's a solid enough start moving into week three all right chiefs at colts i think we're going to see a lot of good things out of the chiefs and a lot of bad things out of the colts and this offense a little bit of a disappointing week two for patty mahomes from a fantasy perspective just 17.3 fantasy points after the monster 33.9 performance in week one still had 235 passing yards in two scores but the game script ultimately didn't really support patty mahomes there in week two on thursday night football but ultimately we, i mean come on there's no question about it if you own patrick mahomes you are starting Patrick Mahomes, I do think this is a really good matchup for him here in week three. Matt Ryan, on the other hand, has been an absolute fantasy boss. 12.2 fantasy points in week one, 3.8 in week two versus Jacksonville. Versus Jacksonville, he had three interceptions, a fumble, although it was not lost. Didn't really matter. Still hurt his stat line. 195 passing yards, 16 completions off 30 pass attempts, and no touchdowns. The Colts look like an absolute dumpster fire at the moment let's hope they can get things going defensively and maybe with that run game because at the moment matt ryan and that passing offense without michael pittman last week just looked absolutely abysmal so i'm crossing my fingers for you colts fans out there but ultimately in terms of matt ryan he's a sit moving into week three all right texans at bears i've got both quarterbacks in this one as a sit. davis mills had 14 and a half fantasy points in week one 5.18 in week two he has just two touchdowns on the entire season there's really nothing to report here uh, i think davis mills is a talented quarterback but ultimately from a fantasy perspective there is no reason to want to start him at this point in the season justin fields on the other hand if i had to start a quarterback in this matchup i guess it'd be justin fields but ultimately he's sitting as quarterback number 23 on the season 14.6 points in week one 8.8 .8 in week two Two, he has two passing touchdowns and one rushing touchdown on the season. He has two interceptions and one fumble on the year. Ultimately, there's just nothing that makes me want to start Justin Fields. There's a pretty good opportunity for both Mills and Fields within this matchup, but I see both offenses maybe relying on the run game more. I just don't like either of these players moving into week three. The Jags at Chargers. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is a sit for me ultimately. 14.4 fantasy points in week one, 18 and a half in week two. I think if you absolutely had to stream him, I wouldn't be totally against it, but I could also see the Chargers defense playing really well in this matchup. So I'm not in love with Trevor Lawrence. I mean, he only has one turnover on the season. He's playing pretty good football. He's playing safe football. You know, the Jaguars are including the run game a little bit more this season. So I just don't love Trevor Lawrence. You know, I, I really don't. I like the Chargers defense. Like I said, the Jags are probably going to focus on James Robinson and hopefully Travis Etienne for those of you who own him. But Lawrence isn't playing bad football. He's just not playing very good fantasy football, right? So he's quarterback number 15 in fantasy right now. Like I said, and super flex leagues or double quarterback leagues or if you're in an option where there's truly not a better streaming option, I think you could roll with Lawrence. He'll give to a decent enough stat line but there's just not any upside involved there in my opinion 
Justin Herbert, on the other hand, is a start. Of course, we need to continue to monitor his health. At the time I'm recording this, he is still questionable for week three. So pay attention to the rest of this video. There may be other quarterbacks you need to take a look at if you are a Justin Herbert owner. I'm crossing my fingers. He can play. If he does play, he's an absolute must start on a weekly basis. Coming in as quarterback number seven at this point on the season. Obviously, if you own Herbert, you're starting him. That offense is way too good. He is way too good within that respective offense. But we have to keep an eye on his injury to the ribs at this point in time. I really hope that he does play because it will really change the entire fantasy landscape of this game if he is a sit in week three. All right, Rams at Cardinals. I really like this matchup. I really like this game script as a whole. So Matthew Stafford bounced back in week two versus Atlanta after putting up just 9.8 points in week one versus Buffalo. 36 passing tips, 27 completions, 272 passing yards, and three touchdowns in week two. He did have two interceptions. Staff Infections got five picks on the season. But like I said, I like this game script. It's an important divisional game. I think things will kind of shift in the right direction for the Rams offense. So I do like Matthew Stafford in week two three overall. Kyler Murray, on the other hand, looks very good. Quarterback eight so far this season. Uh, from a fantasy perspective, he looks very good. That's all that matters in terms of our discussion for today's video. 20 points in week one, 26.8 in week two. He had 277 passing yards, a touchdown, an interception, but also a rushing touchdown. He added 28 rushing yards on the ground, and I believe he had, what, like at least one two-point conversion, if not two. So Kyler Murray is still playing good football from a fantasy perspective and playing good football at the end of the day. Like I said, I just like this divisional matchup. I could see a lot of points put up within this game. So I think both Stafford and Kyler Murray are starts moving into week three. All right, Packers at Bucks. I'm going to get crucified for this one by somebody, but I've got A-Rod and Brady as sits. I think that there's probably better options moving in to week three and listen i do think this could turn into a game where both quarterbacks play well enough but really when we just look at the season so far aaron Rodgers, 3.7 points in week one even with a good outing in week two he still only had 15.3 fantasy points he had 234 passing yards two touchdowns he did have a fumble that was lost he also had a fumble loss in week one but really when you look at the landscape of the packers offense they are relying on the run game and they need to start relying on that defense as well and when we look at the buccaneers offense and tom brady brady had 11.3 fantasy points in week one then just 8.4 in week two uh, 190 passing yards and a touchdown in, including a fumble loss in week two so like both these quarterbacks are hall of famers they're both phenomenal quarterbacks that can both turn it on at any moment but so far this season they haven't done so, you know? And when we look at the Bucks team, they are built on defense right now. And Leonard Fournette has had at least 21 rushing attempts in both games this year. So I just don't love, you know, the landscape of both these offenses for Rodgers and Brady. They're not my favorite starts moving in to week three. With all that being said, although I have them listed as sits, you can start Rodgers and or Brady just due to the name value and they can throw for five touchdowns each. So. I think that this game is mainly going to be focusing on each veteran quarterback's respective defense and run game. And I don't think we're going to see very high ceilings for Rodgers or Brady. And on the other hand, right, Rodgers and the Packers receivers, although Alan Lazard came on last week, had a touchdown and everything, they're still figuring it out. And then in terms of Brady and the Buccaneers receivers, well, uh, they're all injured at the moment or suspended. So I just don't like it moving into week three. I don't like this matchup for either quarterback. Make sure to let me know in the comments down below what you guys think in terms of Rodgers and Brady moving into week three. Right, Falcons at Seahawks. I think that Marcus Mariota is a decent enough stream. I wouldn't expect a crazy high ceiling. 17.8 fantasy points in week one, 14.4 in week three. Two, I like the matchup versus the Seahawks, so I'll put him as a stream. But like I said, just don't expect a crazy high ceiling. He has two passing touchdowns and one rushing touchdown on the year. In week one, he rushed for 72 rushing yards. In week two, just 16. So if the matchup wasn't there, I wouldn't be crazy about it. But I do think the matchup against the Seahawks is favorable enough that you can stream Mariota in week three. Geno Smith is an absolute sit for me here in week three, even going up against Atlanta's 
Defense, just 16 points in week one and seven points in week two for Geno Smith from a fantasy perspective. He has two passing touchdowns on the year, no rushing touchdowns. He had no touchdowns in week two and one interception. I just, there's nothing there from a fantasy perspective for us to have any faith in starting Geno Smith in week three. All right, Niners at Broncos. I've got Jimmy G as a sit. He could turn into a viable streaming option. He had 16 fantasy points in relief of Trey Lance in week two versus Seattle. 154 passing yards and one passing touchdown and one rushing touchdown. So I there's some reason I have some faith in Jimmy G, don't get me wrong, but I want to see things kind of unfold and play out. The Broncos defense hasn't been good they haven't been bad necessarily i don't know like i said i just want to see how things play out within this offense there could definitely be times throughout the season where jimmy g is a streaming option for us all right i've got russell wilson as a sit similar to rogers and brady from a fantasy perspective it just hasn't been there and i know there are fantasy managers out there losing fantasy games right now because russell wilson is their starting quarterback from a fantasy perspective it looked a little bit better in week one 17.8 fantasy points 12.6 in week two versus houston 219 passing yards a touchdown and an interception through the air the niners defense has looked pretty good overall so i just think that there are probably better streaming options out there at the moment if you absolutely have to roll with russell wilson well then i hope this is the week he starts to turn things on and that offense starts to turn things on i definitely still believe in russell wilson on the season but gosh we got to take a look at things right you don't want to be losing these fantasy games early on and i just think there might be better options in terms of streaming options hanging around the league whether it's jared goff or joe flacco i know it sounds crazy but you have to do what you have to do i don't think you should panic and drop russell wilson but we absolutely have to start to find ways to win if we're sitting on a quarterback like russell wilson so i've got him as a sit moving into week three all right cowboys at giants i've got cooper rush as a sit it'll be really neat to see cooper rush come on as a streaming option but he had just 13.6 fantasy points in week two definitely did everything to you know help the cowboys win that game didn't uh, have any turnovers in this game but from a fantasy perspective with just 235 passing yards and one score through the air nothing special there that makes us want to go out and say hey let's stream cooper rush against the giants in week three danny dimes on the other hand is a okay streaming option but not my favorite whatsoever so ultimately i've got him as a sit i think that cowboys defense is not the right defense to pick a streaming option against ultimately danny dimes had 16 fantasy points in week one 13 in week 276 passing yards a touchdown no turnovers in week two after he had two turnovers in week one so i mean like you're not going to get a good ceiling here the defense is very good in terms of the cowboys so i'll just leave daniel jones as a sit moving into week three that'll do it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the content today be sure to hit that like button on the way out hit that subscribe button of course if you are new to the channel and please feel free to drop any comments questions concerns pertaining to the 2022 fantasy football season down below start sits drops ads trades quarterbacks running backs receivers tight ends defense kickers whatever it may be let me know i will get back to you as soon as i possibly can with that i'll say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening and remember you saw it here on the catch